Welcome back to Homeopathy at Home with Melissa. Hey, Melissa. Hey, Bree. I'm super excited for Materia Medica Monday. Yeah, it's been a while. Mm -hmm. Yep. So today we're going to cover a group of remedies. So before we get to that, I would like to read a testimony somebody left about the podcast. So this one is from Treasure Chris. She said, this podcast is an answer to my prayers. Thank you, Melissa, for putting this wealth of information out here. You are spreading joy and hope in so many ways. And it's our faith that really cemented homeopathy as a wonderful answer for me and my family. I'm just starting and my kids are grown, but the plan is just like the gospel to live it out day by day and offer to help whenever it's needed. You are a blessing. Thank you again. Oh, thank you so much, Treasure Chris. I really, really love that. It's so encouraging, right, Brie? When we know, when we find out, when we are able to read that we are actually helping people and they're being blessed. Yeah. Because we just sit here and record in our house. Yeah. Have our conversation. It's Mm -hmm. so funny to me to hear it go out into the world or people tell me that they've listened to it. Yeah. Um, It is really encouraging. It's really Mm -hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Thank you so much for, for taking time to type that up. And um, that was a recent one, you know, just, just very recent. So thank you for that. Um, also, before we jump into our group of remedies, which is very interesting, if you haven't already noticed by the title <laughs> of Girl. this podcast, um, I have, I want to answer a fan mail question. So when you listen to this podcast on Buzzsprout, so on my Buzzsprout, um, on that, that platform, then you can, you can type in a question, um, through the fan mail. There's a link in the description of the podcast on Buzzsprout. And so you can type that in and I'll answer it. So let me, I want to, I want to answer this one question that was from there. Um, It's from Front Royal, Virginia. And the question is, I was listening to your amazing podcast and you kept referring to a pregnancy protocol that women take during their entire pregnancy. Can you point me to the right place to find information on that protocol? My husband and I are getting ready to try for baby number two, and I would love to use homeopathy for this pregnancy. Thanks for all you do. So um, I... We used to follow a really specific pregnancy protocol. A lot of homeopaths follow a a really specific, you know, on this month, you take this cell salt, this month, you take this cell salt and, um, or these couple of cell salts. And what I found is that it can be tedious. It can be hard to follow, especially, um, you know, if you're, you've already, if you've got other children and you're busy and you're a wife and a mom and you know all the things that we do so we decided to make it really simple but also it was confirmed through another homeopath that I um I value and I trust and so once she kind of and she does a lot with women so once she kind of confirmed that's what she's been doing too then I decided just to change so um, <clears throat> bioplasma or the 12 cell salt combo. Take that um, now because it sounds like you are getting ready to try for baby number two. Go ahead and start it now, twice per day, and take it through. What do you think, Bree? Six weeks after? Oh, birth? postpartum. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I would say, and depending on how you feel. Um, yeah. I took it for a long time after my third because I was really tired in a really yeah. stressful period of time. So yeah, but at least I would say, I would agree six weeks. Okay. So, so just take the 12 cell salts in combination makes, makes life easy. Um, rather than trying to do certain cell salts, you have to buy them individually. Then you're buying 12 different bottles of remedy and keeping up with which one is when and when to start. Yeah. It was very complicated. No, I mean, it wasn't very complicated, but it was more complicated than just take the combo. You're good. It works. Mm -hmm. So thanks for the question. Um, Would you say too, to throw this in there, I know you say this in um, classes and things that if you have any other things going on, if you have in your first pregnancy, you had problems. If you have hormone things going on, you also likely need a personalized chronic plan that could help change a lot of this second pregnancy. 
Absolutely. So. Oh, I'm so glad you reminded me of that. That is absolutely true. But also, even if it's just your first baby, if you're right now pregnant or um, or if you're planning to get pregnant soon, I want to encourage you to go to my website, melissacrenshaw.com, make appointment tab, right, Brie? I think they can just scroll down and see... Yeah. Um, what is it called? Is it called pregnancy, pregnancy labor, delivery, pregnancy or labor and delivery? You you'll see the appointment. Anybody can make it. You don't have to, um, you know, you don't have to, to be, uh, you don't have to do the free 15 minute phone call. Skip that. You go straight in if you are pregnant or planning to get pregnant and you can schedule that appointment so that we can help you through now. <clears throat> um, uh, what did you, what do you see there, Brie? Yep. Pregnancy, labor and delivery planning. Awesome. Yep. Yep. Do that. And, um, you're going to find, do you want to, do you want to speak to that? I know I'm putting you on this spot, but do you want to speak to the two different options that you have, or do you just want to talk to sure. each person individual? Okay, go do it. Yeah. So, um, we recently started this where we do obviously homeopathic consults. So these are chronic no matter what you choose, you will get a remedy care plan. Um, recently, I've started the option of a coaching combo where we do homeopathic remedies, but also some coaching. So that's just something I'm really passionate about. I put a lot of time, years of research into, and my heart behind those is really just to educate moms and families to take responsibility, have autonomy and whatever kind of prenatal care, birth, postpartum experience you want. Um, there are a lot of options, lots of, especially in America, there are options, but you don't always know. I would not have known what questions to ask going in until I have some negative experiences and then I want to avoid them. So really my goal is to, there's lots of options. No one is always better than the other. But if you know what to ask, know what to expect, you can, I mean, advocate for yourself and go and educated, empowered, and have your best shot, in my opinion, um, and get the best kind of care. So that's an option. I love it so much. I'm going to do one tonight. I'm really excited. So if you would like that option, that's something we'll talk about when you schedule that consult. Love it. I love it. So you just schedule it and then you can talk about it and you can decide you know, what that will look like for you. Yep. Love yeah. it. I love it so much. Like so that. really personalized. And, um, so, so as tonight we are in material medica Monday, we're going to go from beautiful blessings to beautiful birth. And we're going to now talk about spiders. <laughs> <laughs> what an, an, like an entry to these remedies. <laughs> well, let, let's, we just set you up to be beautiful and calm. And now we're going to listen. If you're afraid of spiders, you need to hear about this. It's true. Ironically, <laughs> you probably could use one of these. Yeah. 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 The spider remedies are really, um, really awesome remedies. And so, you know, did we do the snakes before? Have we done the snake? No, we did the, the milks. We did the, remember, we did yeah, the, we milks. Do the milks. Yeah. So we need, we're going to do the snakes at some point, you yeah. know, and, and just the group, these groups of remedies are really awesome. So, um, the, Tarantula. Tarantula is pretty much the template for the spider remedies in general. So kind of like Lachesis is the template, so to speak, for the snake remedies. It's like the, the main one. Um, tarantula is the template for the spider remedies. And so all of the spiders will always have a slight connection to the tarantula Hispanica picture. <clears throat> so the animal kingdom remedy themes are survival, competition, aggression, um, aggressor versus victim, predator and prey, right? This makes sense in the animal kingdom. Dominance and its opposite, the persecutor and the persecuted, um, sexuality, powerful, aggressive, forceful, you know, you know how animals behave. Um, and I'm just really thinking of, um, a funny chicken story that I'm just not going to tell right now. 
I'm going to stay on, on task. <laughs> so um, individuality. So those are the, are the common themes of the animal kingdom remedies. And some other characteristics of spider remedies in general are the, ten, the tendency to be cold. Um, mm -hmm. Even though they're hyperactive, chilly, they're very chilly remedies and strong relationship to vibration, music, rhythm, noise. They love all of that stuff. Um, distortion of time tend to be um, solitary creatures. They can be restless, active, aggressive, and um, tend also to be solitary. So an interesting modality of the spider remedies in general is not just craving, but better for cigarettes and tobacco. So <clears throat> right now on the heels of my whole um, addictions, I guess, campaign is what you could call it. I did a, a couple of weeks of addictions reel um, themed reels on, on my social media. And so, you know, this can these remedies can kind of speak to that. So it's not, it's not just, a, it's very odd, not just a craving for, but actually better for cigarettes and tobacco. It calms them down and they feel better. Well, of course it calms them down. They feel better. That's why they become addicted to it. Mm -hmm. um, so not just that they, they crave it, but the modality is that they're, they're actually better for it. And so um, all the spiders, to a certain extent, have got neurological symptoms, brain, spine, nervous sy symptoms, system, sorry, and um, especially the tarantula Hispanica picture. So there can be jerking, twitching, nervous spasms, constant motion, and they love to smoke. So that's the generality of the spiders. So tarantula in, you know, specifically, it's the Cuban spider. And... Um, they don't have, it doesn't have many symptoms, but what we do have is a very interesting and clear picture. And it's actually underrepresented in homeopathy, in the world of homeopathy. So not a, there's not a single mental symptom of this remedy in Kent's repertory. And it's, and it's not very well proven, but certain characteristics of the spider tendency um, with the added factor of pyrogenium. So abscesses, boils, carbuncles, agonizing pains, septicemia, septic states in general, um, agony that goes along with that. So the it's kind of kind of like hepersulf with the pain and the agony and the septicemia. Um, along with arsenicum album, it is one of those remedies that is considered to be the remedy where the person is just at the point of death and they're in agony. So that septic state, poisonous state, necrotic, facing death with all the horror, fear, restlessness, and the septic state that goes along with all of that. Um, this is one of our great near-death remedies, um, tarantula. All of the general characteristics of spider remedies would be there, like all the ones that I, that I mentioned before, along with the necrotic, dying, death, a pyrogenium as well. So pyrogenium um, is a little more passive in the sense that it has that it has it doesn't have the spider element there. So it doesn't have quite the agonizing tendency of the tarantula cubensis. Um, tarantula is a, a, with another remedy would probably, let's see, the nearest equivalent to tarantula is our Senegal album. So it's got the anxiety, fear, pain, suffering, near death, and possibly something like hypersulf for the actual septic state, um, pus, rotting, necrotic, gangrenous state. So you can kind of see, um, you know, be because most people know our Senegum album, a lot of people know pyrogenium. And so when you look at, and hepersulf, so when you look at those um, remedies, where that's kind of like what tarantula can look like. Okay. So can I clarify if I'm understanding correctly? Okay. You know, as I do from an outside perspective, you know, these <laughs> remedies better than I do. Um, it sounds like, so pyrogenium has the rotting, that kind of, gross stuff like um necrosis literally sometimes your flesh but internally dying 
infection, but our senecum has the that anxiety, restlessness, the fear. So those pictures kind of together would be maybe when you would consider if you have both elements, like somebody who's really, really sick, like a hepar sulfur pyrogenium infection, yeah. plus the restlessness. I well, like that. Yeah. Some people peaceful, like their, their bodies aren't in tear. I mean, they're maybe dying and maybe an elderly person who has some fear, but doesn't have anything serious going on physically. Mm -hmm. Would it think one of these remedies is that right? Right. So if there's the fear of dying, you're, you know, you're, you're dying and you're afraid and you've got some anxiety with it, then our Cynicum album, if mm -hmm. there's, you know, um, if there's just the, if there's some, um, necrotic sepsis. So, so pyrogenium is great for sepsis mm -hmm. and, um, and gangrene. And so, um, you could just use pyrogenium, but I think what, what, um, the, the materia medica says is that pirate that tarantula is worse with the, the, um, necrotic state, the sep, the septic state. And, um, and that it's a lot like, so it's worse than pyrogenium and it's a lot like arsenic album and hepersulf. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> thank you. So, um, this tarantula, tarantula is number one for easing through the death process. Um, but arsenic album is high up there too. So I would actually say arsenic album is number one and then tarantula would be, you know, very close second if it fits. So going through the death process as painlessly, as anxiety free as possible with as much dignity and self-awareness as you possibly can. Um, palliatively, it, it's going to be great, you know, at the end of in death and, um, and then there may be a syphilitic component as a possibility, but spider remedies tend to be tubercular in nature. So the next remedy, so this is tarantula cubensis. So let's see, let me. This uh, is the Cuban tarantula. Right, not Hispanic. Uh, so I did say Hispanic. Uh, earlier and that's yeah, two different spiders. huh yeah they're two different ones in materia medica but you said it right the hispanic is that almost like the umbrella remedy it sounds like of the spiders where most of them maybe not umbrella is not the right term but they most most of the other ones connect somewhat to the hispanica picture okay yes and then what we what i just described the keynotes i just went through are for cu cubensis okay okay all right do the next one and I think I'm pronouncing this right, you guys. Theridian. Yep. Um, it's a little orange spider. Um, I have not ever heard of this remedy. So this is why I love these. This is fun. The major keynotes for Theridian are incredible sensitivity to noise. So very deeply noise that is felt almost in the teeth, in the bones, and the nervous system. Everything is intensely on edge as a result of that sensitivity to noise. Um, almost like the nervous system is in a constant state of excitement. There are other remedies similar like coffea, asarum, I think next vomica, that hypersensitivity to noise, but this is very extreme. Um, literally like the noise goes into the nerves, into the teeth, into the bones, which might cause clenching of the jaw, very intense. Um, so the noise and agitation of the world going on around them all the time, even subliminally sometimes it pushes them into that state of maybe a nervous destructive breakdown. Um, so this may affect your balance in our ear. It could create a vertigo that's very extreme. Um, it is... George Vitulkas, he has a Materia Medica, right? Um, he made a connection after a number of years of this type of agitation, sorry, going backwards a little bit to that, that noise, that destructive picture. Um, it's similar to an Alzheimer's state. It's not immediately like that, but that destructive process to the central nervous system can look like Alzheimer's is what he 
he said. Um, so sorry, I'm going to jump back to now the inner ear stuff The it can affect the balance, inner ear, vertigo. So you might see dizziness, um, a dizzy vertigo state. They might even be almost hysterical, but quiet agitated because there's a constant underlying irritation of the nervous system. Um, might be very dissociated. You might have tinnitus, Meniere's disease. Um, Theridion has a nasty catarrhal picture, so thick, yellow, offensive catar, chronic nasal catar. It may follow or be similar to the coculus picture with that inner ear problem, the imbalance, vertigo, dizziness, seasickness, a good travel remedy. Those are all coculus um, keynotes, but this can maybe, it can mimic some of those things. It can be related to that. Um, this remedy, so Theridion could develop where somebody has been under the same stress that the coculus person is under. So like night watching, um, caring for somebody through the night, um, really just that constant taxing of the nervous system. Somebody that is pushed to their limit, to a breaking point until they're so tired, so dizzy with the extreme racket noise, that agitation that it drives them to despair. Um, so that's what they mean by it can look like coculus in that, in that way, where you have the night watching that exhaustion where you're pushed to despair. Um, so vertigo is a big picture, a big part of Theridion, um, with, so vertigo with that sound noise agitation. Um, it is part of the tubercular miasm. So there's a lot of restless discontentment. They're constantly moving from place to place, constantly on the go, can't sit still. That's also that spider picture. Um, this could be a good remedy for Ritalin picture. So ADHD, um, which I have seen a lot in the other spider remedies too, is ADHD, that agitated, restless child or adult. Um, this remedy is different from tarantula, tarantula. I said that's so weird. And that it doesn't have quite the strength and power that tarantula has not that same sensitivity, or I'm sorry, the same energy, but it's sensitivity to noise is a very negative sensitivity where tarantula is sensitive to that, um, the sound and vibration to music, but in a positive way. So that was interesting. I reading over that they tarant tarantula. I keep saying that differently every single time in the materia medica, it's spelled tarantula, but sometimes I see tarantula either one. Yep. Yep. They like to dance. They like the music where Theridion is irritated and agitated by that noise. Um, this can be good for necrosis of the teeth, of the bones. Um, maybe somebody who's prematurely aged, that noise bothers them so much that they are just, um, they have a hard time making decisions about anything. They're very frazzled. They completely lack self-confidence. Um, all those typically aggressive, forceful, animalistic spider qualities are mostly deficient now because they are so frazzled by the noise. So you keep hearing me say that the noise agitation is huge for this picture. Um, they'll completely lose their libido where the other remedies, spider remedies don't have that. That's different. Um, they still have that restlessness, agitation of the other spider remedies, but it's really the big thing is noise. They may crave oranges and bananas. Um, time feels like it, go, it goes really fast. It's a great migraine remedy. Um, can be good for puberty, pregnancy, and menopause. They may have an incredibly sensitive spine. Um, it's good for sunstroke with incredible agitation can be good for cardiac pains and angina which the black widow spider remedy can also be good for 
Um, it can be used for hallucin hallucinations for sight and hearing where they are hallucinating either of those things and tends to be more left-sided. The one thing that I said probably 1000 times and that remedy was noise. Yeah. So Theridian is hyper, hypersensitive to noise, but has the restlessness that goes along with the other spider remedies, has really intense vertigo that can go, feels like it's going into the teeth and bones and think that destructive state. They're completely disoriented. They're frazzled. They're almost like that Alzheimer's state out of control. Um, I think that is the wrapping up the keynotes are all of those things I just read for Theridian. Yeah. And I just want to say, since so many people are hypersensitive to noise these days, um, Nux Vomica is my number one go-to. So I would, you know, if you're sitting here thinking, oh my gosh, I'm so hypersensitive or my son is, or my daughter or whatever, you know, to noise, um, I would, I would go with Nux Vomica first, Nux Vomica 30 once or twice per day, you know, do that for eight weeks. And then, because, you know, I would, I would only go with Theridian if, if the whole, if, if it fit my whole picture, not just for that one specific thing. Yeah. Okay. I just want to say that because it's really a really prominent thing that a lot of people are struggling with is hypersensitive, um, hypersensitive to that. noise. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, next is lac Latrodectus mactans. I don't even know I'm saying that right. Latrodectus mactans. This is a black widow spider. So, um, this will have all of the spider symptoms, aggression, predator versus prey, dominator, dominated, um, and so it, it has arguably the most severe angina spasms and pains of any remedy in our books. So we can compare for that angina, we can compare cactus, um, lilium, lilium tig, uh, calmia, magfos, and this is like a clutching over the heart, um, you know, that the person is, it, this is a... <laughs> The, the the picture just popped in my head of Fred Sampson. <laughs> oh, you know, you know, you used to watch this. What is it? What? You Wait, are you saying Simpson? No. Samson? Samson. Fred? Samson. Uh -oh. Am I like looking like a, a baby here? Is this embarrassing? No, I might not know. Well, I mean, it is a really old show. Fred. The Samsons. Is that not the? <laughs> is the. What? Samson? Who is Fred Samson? Fred Samson. I might not even have the name the, the right last name. And Andy but, Griffith? What? What show are we? <laughs> oh, Sanford. Oh, Sanford. No, 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 no. That didn't help me. Fred Sanford. Fred Sanford. Okay. Did you ever watch Sanford and Sons? No. Okay. So Fred Sanford. <laughs> This would help if I said so the right funny, last name. You guys, I hope you had a good laugh about this. But you oh. know what? I mean, like Sanford and Son was, it was the TV series were, was from 1972 to 78. I was born in yeah. 72. So yeah. that's the only reason, you know, that I, I ever, I, I loved all of those, sh those shows, Sanford and Sons and, and, um, oh goodness, Good Times. And what was the one, um, you're asking was, me like I, I would know, I'm right? gonna know there was another guy they lived oh, man I don't know I don't remember but I loved all those shows and he would call like he had they had a um a neighbor their neighbors were white and they would call their neighbors crackers <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's definitely a, from the 70s okay. so anyway Sanford and Son so Fred Sanford used to say oh this is it Elizabeth this is it and he would clutch his heart this is the one this is the one and so I just thought of that with the whole um with the whole clutching. like clutching clutching mm -hmm. over the heart that's your your um lactrodectus mactans so um this is so the pain of lactrodectus <clears throat> is absolutely crippling painful angina spasm. It's as if it takes all of those neurological symptoms that we see in the spiders and actually 
condenses them into this cramping around the heart that is life-threatening and, um, and really serious. And so, you know, I mean, we, we have to say, sure, if you, if you have a tendency to this, or you've had this before, or you want to be ready, <clears throat> get your lactrodectus, but get mm -hmm. to the hospital if you need to take it on the way to the hospital, you know, be, be smart. So this is agonizingly painful. And, um, you know, the, again, the heart symptoms to a major degree, um, this remedy can also have increased appetite, excruci excruciation, um, and with constipation. So they seize up like a drum, um, nothing moves inside, no peristalsis. It's as if there's a complete paralysis in that particular area. So similar to the um, tarantula hispanica, um, Hispania picture. <clears throat> um, so it's absolutely inactivity of the rectum. And they have fight, flight, or fright. And all the kingdom remedies, um, animal, animal kingdom remedies do this. So there's stiffness, paralysis of the muscles, and they have, um, their fears are of bats, death, dying, and um, they have anxiety over just the complete loss of control and over, over anything. So um, there is a heart combo. So get your pen and paper if you don't already have it out, taking notes from, from these remedies. There's a heart combo um, for that you can combine cactus, china, out, also known as cinchona bark, and crataegus in low potencies like 3X or 6X that can tone up the heart for people who have heart pathologies and um, or slight heart weakness. And so it can really um, firm up the arteries. And this can be given like a tonic that you use um, just to tone up the heart and carry around you can carry around lactrodectus with you. So if you ever get the spasm, then you take it as needed. Um, <clears throat> Magfoss is great for people who just get a little bit of a heart twinge, um, a little bit of angina. You can sip it in warm water or... Um, you know, but if it's really serious and painful, then lactrodectus is going to be um, a better remedy. So Brie, take us to the the last remedy. So this, this great one that I don't even know how to say. <laughs> I'm going to think Miguel Lassiodora. Yep. Perfect. Yep. It is the black Cuban spider or the bird spider. And I have seen pictures of these and they are unbelievable. I mean, if this is what I'm thinking of, the it's the bird spider that has a reputation of eating birds and small rodents. So imagine the spider, the size of it is enormous. It's like, you should look, look up a picture real quick. Show our YouTube friends. Um, it's hairy and black and leaps like it can jump. So don't want to be near this one. It does not live in a web. It weaves its own little cone in the ground and it sits there and waits to pounce on whatever creepy crawler comes its way. So now that you know a lot about this bird spider, the remedy made from this spider has a very strong tendency for jerking and twitching, particularly in the upper part of the body. So maybe twitching and jerking in the jaw. It can be anywhere in the body, but it has a particular bias for upper extremities like the top half of the body. So like the other spider remedies, it has restlessness, but you might see in this picture, fidgety hands. Um, could be also if there's been a suppression of gonorrhea that leads to some of the um, neurological symptoms, this could be a good remedy. It is also good for dyskinesia, which is volunt involuntary, erratic movements of the face, arms, legs, or trunk. So think um, somebody with tics could fit this picture in the upper part of their body, which I feel like that's more common. Did you look up a picture? I did. I'm going to show everyone. So if you are, if you really don't want to see this, then just go ahead and turn your pause it or fast forward it or whatever. Do you look at that in that person's hand? Biggest. Can you see that? Stinking thing you ever did see. Look at this. I would not be okay. 
I would absolutely not no. be okay um, to no. come across a spider like that. So I'm not petrified of spiders like I used to be, but I still don't want one on me. That's like a right. small rodent. That's that not thing. even no, a right. spider in my opinion, right. except for the fact that it has eight legs. Um, do we want to do any brief overview of tarantula hispanica? Is that in your notes? It is not in here because it's the big over remedy. So do we want to just touch on some of the keynotes? Yeah. You mean from the Materia Medica? Yeah, I have mine open. So, I mean, I feel like we did cover a lot of the overall picture. So hyperactivity, ADD, angina can be good for autism, um, hysteria, nervous disorders, numbness, MS, um, what else? Restlessness, twitching, sepsis, suffocation, um, violent pains, vertigo. And if any of you know, there was this dance called the Tarantella. It's actually a song I played at one of my piano recitals. And it's a really fast, crazy, and your hands, now that I think of it, I didn't know this at the time, move <laughs> like you're bouncing around like a yeah. it's very bouncy, happy dance. And yeah. so anyway, tidbit. Um, do you see anything specific you want to go over for this one? Nope. Okay. I don't, I mean, it doesn't feel like anything different. So I think the reason we, mo we covered the other ones because they're more specific keynotes. Yeah. If you need a different one besides Hispanica. So, yeah. Okay. Oh. So there you go. The spiders, the spider family or spider remedies, um, Again, maybe someday we'll do the the snakes and um, that's these remedies are really useful. I mean, especially I mean, you heard about the Lactrodectus and the, the you know the the tarantula cubensis and the Hispanic one and um, and even the you know I guess the the little orange the Theridion. I think they're really useful. I don't you know I don't know if everybody has to have those remedies, but you should know about them. So. Mm -hmm you know, if it fits, then <clears throat> maybe you could use it. Thank you. Right. Thanks for being here. We'll look forward to seeing you all next time.